In the video on chair conformations, we looked at how to draw chair conformations, the equatorial and axial position on the chair conformations, or this hexane ring, as well as the concept of a chair flip. To continue with this video, we're going to look at how a chair flip changes the positions of substituents on the hexane ring. So we'll start by drawing a chair conformation. Just to practice. So not too bad, but with practice it gets faster and faster. Now in this case we're going to add one substituent and we're going to add an iodine atom right here. So if you watch the video over chair conformations, you should realize that this position is an axial position because it's going straight up and down. But also, we would consider this axial position to be up as well because it's pointing up as in, like an antenna as opposed to down like a, a, le a table leg. And a down position would be here because these would both be axial, but one's up and one's down. The same thing happens with equatorial positions because if we go to the leftmost carbon atom, here we have an up equatorial position accompanied by a down axial position. And here on the atom, if we go clockwise around the ring, we have a down equatorial position and an up axial position. So every carbon atom on the hexane ring has an axial position and an equatorial position, but also an up and down orientation. And this becomes important when we're actually going to do the chair flip. When hexing rings with substituents do a chair flip, this action changes the position of, the sub of any substituents on the hexane ring. And I'm going to show you a relatively easy way to observe the outcome of the chair flip and the resulting position. Now, as you can see to the right, I've drawn a blank chair conformation to show our outcome. Now, with the chair flip, what happens is here we have our iodine atom, and it's in an up axial position. And I'll just put AX to save the time. Now, during the chair flip, it's going to keep its up definition, but it's going to switch from axial to equatorial. And the best way to draw the outcome of this is go one atom over clockwise. That's why I've learned, and I'll show you how this works. So as you can see, both of these chair conformations here, they look exactly the same. So to draw the outcome, we're going to pretend we're moving the iodine atom to this carbon over here. And like I said, we're going to keep the up position, right? So on the right, the only up position we have is the equatorial. And we'd expect that because as we said, it keeps the up orientation, but it switches from equatorial, excuse me, axial to equatorial, or vice versa. So that would put the iodine atom here. Now keep in mind, we haven't physically moved the iodine atom from one carbon to the next. Because once the chair flip happened, the difference we see here is that we did the chair flip and we turned the molecule around a little bit to bring the iodine closer to us. We can apply the same process to a hexane ring that has multiple substituents. And I've drawn the arrow in the middle here to re-emphasize the fact that hexane rings are flipping between these two conformations, although one might be preferred over another, and we'll learn that soon enough. So let's apply the same process that we did in the last example to this one. As we said, we're going to move each substituent over one carbon. So that means the chlorine atom will be moved here and this methyl group will be moved here. Now let's identify the positions they're in right now. This is in an up axial position like the example before and this methyl group is in a down equatorial position. So we're going to keep the respective, the chlorine's going to keep its up and the methyl group's going to keep its down, but they're going to switch orientations when it comes to axial, axial position or equatorial position. So let's go ahead and draw what that would be. The chlorine atom's moving over here. It's going to keep up, so that means it's going to be up equatorial, and we'd have the chlorine atom here. Now with the methyl group, it's down. And since it was equatorial, it's going to be axial. So here, we'll have the methyl group right there. And that's how you draw, do the chair flip relatively quickly. 
Next, we're going to learn why a molecule might prefer one chair conformation over another, based on these positions of the substituents.